There is no human condition that does not attract uh, a flight of language. I can tell you uh, all about uh, post-dural uh, 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 hemotomata, uh, hemotomata, and uh, and uh, other medical objects. And incidentally, there is a a doctor in the house, <laughs> not a doctor of philosophy. There are those here too, but a medical doctor, and he is has come along with me in my recess from the hospital to make sure that I don't fall on my face. Uh, or if I do, that he will apply the necessary uh, measures. <laughs> uh, you know, uh, the words that float uh, in the atmosphere that are created and generated with every new sport, with every new development like, uh, like uh, email, uh, a whole new language swarms in to the public consciousness. But the great words are the old ones, love, compassion, understanding, friendship, and all of these qualities that have had such trouble surviving in the world today. Uh, in the course of, of the film that Eric selected, there have been uh, kind words said, generous words said, uh, there has been a, uh, uh, I'm afraid, some grand comparisons. But I have some grand comparisons of my own. And I say that not out of uh, quid pro quo for Jeffrey Cohen, but he has created a kind of Periclean Athens out of here, out of the school of journalism, uh, where, where uh, uh, there are meetings and issues, and there, are, there's we have our Pericles, we have our Demosthenes. Our Demosthenes happened to be fired by the LA Times recently, <laughs> but uh, we have them, and uh, and. and the very establishment of the Norman Lear Center by Jeff Cowan, under Jeff Cowan's administration, is, uh, does honor to academe, which uh, tends to get kicked around in the political life of, of this country. And uh, I am so, I consider myself so fortunate to have a, a, a place on the USC roster. And, you know, people like Jeff Baum uh, will take an occasion and build it from nothing to a historic monument. And he, he's done that, tried to do that with me. His material failed him at times, but uh, <laughs> Uh, he, he's, uh, he's the engineer of, of whatever quality there was to this evening. Uh, I want to thank you for coming out on this January night and for receiving Eric's film, which was done with great heart and patience and expense. Uh, and. Uh, I feel that I'm the luckiest man in the world, notwithstanding the uh, the uh, traffic signals and and the uh, semaphoric arrangement of my head. Uh, but uh, I want to thank Jeff and and uh, and 
both Jeffs, <laughs> Baum and, and Cowan, and my good friends in the faculty, Ed Guthman and, and Bryce Nelson, and the, the wonderful people I'm surrounded with. Pulitzer Prize winners cross, going in and out of doors like normal people. <laughs> and, uh, and then the, the, the kind of uh, the students that have arrived, uh, at least in, in my ken, uh, four of them showed up at the hospital yesterday. <laughs> And I'm on leave from the hospital. I have to be back by 9 o'clock. <laughs> and uh, we better get going. Uh, but I, I want to thank you all from the bottom of, a, of an overloaded heart for being here and for receiving with civility and more the work of Eric Simonson. Thanks, Robert. Um, I know that, no, right. So that Norman and Eric could hear it. Uh, and or just Eric, shout it out, go ahead. Uh, if you want. And Eric, I, did you want to say a, a word or two as well? Uh, I think we're going to continue this, uh, if you'll let us, allow us, Norman. After you leave, we'll go up to the reception room and uh, finish off the line. <laughs> did get finished. Um, I did want to, well, I want. I think we should do a couple of questions sure. because Norman doesn't have that much That's time, but there's right. something I did want to read um, when uh, we're finished. Yeah? Uh, Mr. Ferguson, there's not a lot of uh, poetry on the radio. Uh, not a lot of poetry on the radio these days, and, and your uh, professional marriage of, of poetry and radio is a uh, uh, appears so uh, so odd and unique. What, I, 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 I either forgot or didn't hear in the film. W professionally, what were you up to uh, before uh, you took that? Uh, you, you were you were writing uh, PR, but were you also uh, a practicing poet before you took your 15 minute 9.30 uh, I slot? Would, I would like to be a practicing poet, uh, but I, I have uh, reservations about my own poetry. I have great uh, enthusiasms about other people's poetry, but uh, mine, you know, when On Another Triumph was published, I took pains to stay in the, in the, for, in the foreword that this was not poetry, that the arrangement of the lines was in order to assist the actors in their phrasing. And uh, had I claimed it to have been a poem, it would have been clobbered. Uh, as it was, there were reviewers who said, Cohen says it's not a poem, but it really is. And uh, they fought for that distinction. So I don't know whether that answers your question, but uh, uh, I w would like to, to pay a compliment in, in uh, retrospect to CBS not the CBS of today, but, but the CBS which gave this, this worker uh, an opportunity to make mistakes, to experiment, to develop the, the drama suitable to that medium. It's a great medium. And by the way, I left out of my acknowledgments of my joy in seeing Ed Cray and Murray Thompson, uh, both uh, colleagues uh, 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 which, uh, who make my experience here the richest of my life. And I thank them, and I thank Dean Cowan, and I thank all of you who come here with goodwill to listen to uh, uh, to watch a film about uh, a man now 95 and not getting any younger. Uh, so, you know, this is a great school. Did, did I mention the name of my, of my physician? Uh, and uh, he 
he's he's sitting next to Janet Waldo and yeah. and and Janet Waldo's daughter Lucy, who was on the faculty at USC, oh, yeah. and who was once a student of my own, and uh, her qualifications were such that she should have given the course, not taken it. <laughs> In any case, uh, I want to thank you all, friends whom I know and love, and friends whom I would like to know and love. The love part of it is as, as a certain reserve, <laughs> but uh, that, that uh, cannot be helped. That is part of, of the human experience. Uh, Mr. Corwin, uh, you know, in listening to your words, in listening to your words, um, you read magazines and newspapers and listen to the radio way back when, when the, uh, there was poetry in the words, there was an impact, there was a whimsicalness. Today it's almost matter of fact um, in journalism. Do you see any going back to where there well, is a poetry? You know, in the distinctions between reading a book or, or listening to radio or watching television, which is the supreme medium of today. I watched some wrestling matches last night. <laughs> uh, the difference is that when you listen to a broadcast, you are collaborating with the writer and director. You imagine, you know, the, uh, in, uh, an aria from Carmen can be sung by, uh, by a, a Carmen who weighs 350 pounds, but uh, on the radio, you hear her as a dangerous, uh, lithe woman with a rose a uh, thorn rose between her teeth. And uh, the, there was no term in radio comparable to boob tube or couch potato. Just as there is no term denigrating the reader of a book who collaborates with the author. It's one on one. And he, you become the associate. And the, the, the part of the uh, performance, the part of the novel, the part of the play, uh, on the note of triumph, uh, Eric has, has experienced enough to, to I think, uh, ratify what I'm saying, that, that uh, the program is made by its reaction as much as by its performance. When the, when the people of America responded as they did, including the critics, all but two, uh, <laughs> they, they, that was not of my doing, that was their doing. They interpreted, they, they, they reported, and they contributed. And I think that is characteristic of any good work, a good movie, a good opera. You know, Carmen was a, at first a, a dismal failure. And uh, its composer, Bizet, thought he had failed. Herman Melville thought that Moby Dick was a failure. But the, the people, you and I, and a few million others, have rectified that misunderstanding. Uh, Thoreau's Walden first edition took 50 years to sell out its 5,000 copies. But uh, uh, it finally uh, established Thoreau as a great American idol. Incidentally, uh, Herman Melville, Melville once said of Ralph Waldo Emerson that he had the feeling that if Ralph Waldo Emerson had been around 
when God created the earth, he would have had some valuable suggestions. <laughs> and uh, I'm sure that valuable suggestions are coming from us all. And I hope they will come from the electorate in November, next November. On, on that note, I beg leave of you. And I, know I, there's something I thank you again. If you, if I can give Before we close, yeah, Eric, if you yeah. could. Well, there, there, are, there are a couple of things. One, I want to um, thank Mark Herzog, who's in the house, one of our producers back here, at whose help it wouldn't have been possible to make this film. And I have to thank uh, Corinne Marinin, who is she's my partner in crime. Uh, we are partners, and um, I couldn't have done this without her. And she also set this up this uh, event um, in, con in conjunction with USC. So thank you very much, Corinne. Um, the thing that I wanted to read was something that Norman gave me just a couple weeks ago, which is the travesty of the, the documentary is that after I finished filming something, Norman would hand me something else and I'd want to get it back on film, so we'd go back into the editing room and put it in. This came a little bit too late, but I feel like I have to read it because um, it's pretty amazing. Um, this is from Carl Sandburg, uh, dated May 15, 1945, Harvard, Michigan. Dear Norman, don't know how I missed the first broadcast of On the Note of Triumph. The repeat last night came through loud and clear, and I think on scorecard points, I could rate it the greatest achievement I ever met in a combination of poetry, drama, music, bursting, and flowering, and plowing, and planting at, the, at an appropriate moment. If my metaphors get telescoped, it is because I don't have time for, and there, I don't have time for, and there is no need for analysis and synthesis. For me, it has the timing, the eloquence, the relationship, relation of presence of, to future that Lincoln's house divided speech had and that Petr Patrick Henry's liberty or death cry had. The skills you have been involving in developing, the best range of your personality from tragic to comic were there. Bernard Herrmann, too, must, be, m must have been growing. And Martin Gable, that's the fellow who narrated the, the film, or the, the uh, On Another Triumph, will never have a bigger role. Usually at the precise moment it was flowing towards the it's excessively emotional, it changed pace and got contrapuntal and was in there pitching with logic and unanswer unanswerable sil syllogisms. I could tell in, in the voices of Quentin Reynolds and William Shearer in their afternoon broadcasts that it had clutched them deep. I am sure that for many it hit an all-time high in radio. Prayers and deep good wishes as always, Carl. You know, he, he makes grand comparisons, uh, comparing my uh, anything that I have written with a speech of Lincoln and uh, Patrick Henry's I uh, give me liberty or give me death is a grand comparison. And I wish to return to my own grand comparisons this evening about Jeff Cowan and this university. They are grand comparisons, and I make them with as much uh, sincerity and force as Sandberg in writing to this, uh, to your deponent. You. So we'll, we'll be, re uh, before we go, Eric, could you re remind us about the distribution plans for the documentary? We are on hold with that. We've been, at, we've been put on a short list with eight other films for Academy Award consideration. And the nominations will be announced next week. And until we hear about that, we, um, we are, haven't been talking to distributors or making any plans for the film. Thank you. And thanks, everybody. We'll be reconvening upstairs in the lobby for a reception.
করতে 